Hello, what's up everybody? Welcome to this another episode of Azure DevOps Organization for Absolute Beginners. I'm going to go ahead and call this one 102 because the first one was delivered yesterday, the 9th of June. Uh, of 2023 and this one today that we're going to be recording today is going to be 102 that is for uh just for information purposes and so guys welcome back to this channel if you are new on this channel today um this is uh, a silver text space guys so we do come over here to do make things simple we this is a whole community right of uh uh tech lovers okay those who have that passion for working on tech devops engineer software developers we do also have machine learning and ai engineers in this community desmond thank you and we also have uh, some other guys software developers i'm going to thank Rodrick and also ns if you guys want to know these people you want to go to our channel and you can check on some of the videos that we made uh i mean the, because we made like a, a planning for this uh 2023 right at the beginning of the year we had a planning meeting we talked about some projects that uh, community people are working on on this platform so please guys if you want to become part of this community we really want to have you on this community because we want to make everything easy okay this is d mystifying what the tech space is all about for all of us tech lovers so like i talked about the video that we will be building today is going to be on azure devops and it's going to be 102 yesterday we deliver 101 this is a video about you want to really watch this video because some of those who have watched this video already they've given thumbs up for this video they love this video it's an amazing video interesting content starting from scratch how you can literally if you know nothing about azure devops you can watch this video and it will let you into the space you will learn it and this second video that we're going to be delivering today which is azure devops for absolute beginner beginners 102 it's going to be a follow-up video for this first video i am your host guys paul Mjwabe. you can see uh, my name is right here under the under the first video and obviously you can see you i'm going to make sure you have my name as well you know and i mean we want to also leave the link for this video into this other video that we're making today all right so follow up let's dive into the video right now guys yesterday we created this uh platform azure devops from scratch we talked about azure devops organization for absolute beginners so this is for absolute beginners if you are a pro if you're working with azure devops for a while and you see some of the things that you are already familiar with and you don't want to watch that specific section you can go ahead skip the section and you move on to the next section that you feel like it's very important for you because we do not want to waste your time okay and we do appreciate uh, whoever that is jumping on this platform to watch anything okay guys and um, we are going to cover a lot of things today the video is going to be short we do want to make this video to be uh, maximum one hour duration or less it can be 30 minutes, can be 40 minutes, but whenever we notice that okay, we've delivered enough content, we can stop and we will continue in the next section. So if you find it valuable and you've learned a few new things from this, you want to subscribe so that you want to subscribe so that when we prepare the follow-up video, you can receive notification and continue from the next session. We've created a brand new list for uh, resources on on microsoft 
for us to explore uh, some of the services and the resources that they're offering. And you can always, uh, we are more than welcome to always jump on the site and see what you can learn from here, guys. Let's jump right into it then. Okay, so we ended yesterday on this platform. This is a brand platform. The only new thing that we've added on this platform today is this one issue right here. Okay, one issue. Call it a user story. Okay. And another thing that we have added on this platform is users. We've added users onto the organization. We have we did explain all of these components from right here. So for today, we are going to go ahead, explain the components that are under the, because these components are under the project setting. You can see that from right below here, they're under the project setting. So all these components that we did explain yesterday are components that are project related. And our project is Demo Agile 1. This is the name of the project right here. And so today we are going to explain a few things that are uh, organizational related. And this is the name of the organization. The name of, the, the name of our organization is Demo Agile 234. All right. So if we have that understanding, we will go on that project and we'll go ahead and explain the components that we have under the project. We will show you how to add team members because team members are added from the organizational level. You don't add team members directly from the project. You can add team members from the organization. If you are a project admin, you cannot add a team member onto that project if the team member hasn't been added on into the organization. Remember guys, that's what I mean here. So you can be a project admin, but you can, and you cannot, you cannot add a member onto the project if the member is not added onto the organization. So we'll show you how to add a member onto the organization and we'll show you how to add a member onto the project. Okay, those are the things that we'll be covering today. And right from there, we'll show you how to change the process because right now, if you look at what we have here, right, let's go to the backlog. From the backlog, this is an issue. See, this item is called issue. Okay, this is right here, it's issue. But you want to have it being called user stories. Okay, because from right here, you see, they're all issues. Okay, because you can have a setting such that uh, user stories are issues. This is when the process that you're following is not agile process. Okay, it's not the agile process. So we are going to show you how to do the setting so that that is under the organizational section so that you can have this called user stories and which is the agile process okay so you can have it called user story agile process and the agile process is, is going to be it could be scrum any of the frameworks okay if you understand what i'm talking about it could be any of the frameworks scrum kanban uh or whichever you want to call it safe maybe extreme programming crystal lean and all of that is fine okay guys so let's go ahead if you want to go to the organizational setting you simply come from the top right here okay you click on the organization and right from below left you will see organizational setting right here okay so i'm going to go ahead and you, you, before you, we move on, you can also see from right here, because this is the project that we have here right now. You can also, you can create a new organization from the left right here. You can add a new second organization. That's, we did show you how to add, to create an organization yesterday, which is what we, which is exactly what we did on this, on this organization. And you can create you can also learn how to create a new project you can create a new project right from the top on the right hand side right here so if you are in your organization project managers um project coordinators uh managers uh okay product owners product owners so because you remember you are uh, some of the experts that you need to manage these platforms for your organization 
for the projects that are in your organization. So you can go ahead, project managers, project coordinators, scrum masters, as well as product owners, team uh, team leads. Oh, yeah, all of that. So you need to know all what we're talking about here. So this Azure DevOps is an amazing platform, same like Jira. So you can use it to manage track and releases your software projects or other form of projects that you're working on. It could be HR projects. It could be projects that you are working on within your organization. It could be, uh, it could be, okay, there, there are some of the projects that you're working on that are typically uh, uh, manufacturing projects. So you can use this to track, collaborate, and work on your, uh, your projects as you want. So we will go from right here, click on organizational setting from the left and bottom. I, I guess I noticed that in the first video, sometimes you don't see what I'm clicking. So you can click it from right here, bottom left, right here. Click on organizational setting. On the organizational setting, so let's go ahead, look at what the components are. And we want us to start from the top. Okay. So on the organizational setting, we'll go. Uh, one component after the other. So on the overview, the overview session simply demonstrates, shows you the organizational name, the URL of the organization. Okay, this is just a link or the access to organization. So you can go from this link. If you are already a member onto this organization, and you can sometimes just use this link and then sign onto that platform, which is fine. And you can also um, generate a privacy URL, okay, because you don't want to work with just what uh, uh, your organization or, or what is generated by default, okay. So you can uh, key in a new, a brand new URL right here, okay. Sometimes you want to use uh, specific names, okay, for privacy reasons. And you can go ahead and give a brief description of the organization. So the goal of this is to demo and show you how to use uh, Azure DevOps from scratch to pro okay and this time here okay because you can always set your time zone this is a uat time zone you can set it to eastern standard time and whatever so i am in eastern standard time so i'm going to go ahead and i will select the eastern standard time this is center time for those who are in the center time zone um we can go ahead i'm the eastern standard time right now so it's uat minus five minus five that's it right there and you want to also always make sure that you have that time zone um, set up so that uh, it helps to track the calendar and the times on the calendar okay so that everything that's been tracked on your project is actual all right and that was it for the overview section and right here you can always tell you who is the admin of the organization who can change a few things okay, you can change the owner so and, that, and that's it so usually it's just one person okay this one just one person it's not like the admin under the project that you can have multiple admins for your project but for the organization you can have just uh, just one owner okay right here which is the root owner the root owner people uh, the tech space who, uh, some of us some of those who are technical will understand what i mean okay let's go ahead the next thing is going to be your project this is your project we have just one project at this time we did went ahead step by step and show you how to create this project we created it yesterday but you can go ahead and add a new project next is users this is users i did went ahead added a few users uh, from yesterday until now so we separated yesterday when i didn't have users at that time so i added some users one of the users is uh, the user which is a demo is what we created yesterday so i went ahead and added one other user bit and i added another one demo as well which is uh, the second demo i was talking about in the video yesterday and another one called sun city and we will go ahead and add another user today. Okay, let's add a user. I'll show you how to add a user. So if you want to add a user, like I said, you add users from the organizational level before you can add the users onto projects. And so this is from where you add your user. Click just right here. 
okay you click from right here add users because sometimes ui project manager you are um maybe you have access you are the one that created this azure devops platform on in your organization and you're maybe you're a new team member join your, joins your organization and they want you to absolutely create uh, uh add this user onto the project that you got you guys are working on so you want to go from if you don't have access if you are not the owner of the organization of this azure devops platform you will request for the owner to add that team member onto into the organization then you as maybe the project manager the team lead or the scrum master or the it project coordinator or whoever you can go ahead and then add a member onto the project so i'm going to go ahead you can add a users using their emails okay using their emails and, and and let's go ahead i'm just going to go ahead and add uh, one other email so the email is uh number 40 bit more 40 okay at gmail.com so and we are going to have this member added okay although this one is an external because this is a, a free account that we are using sometimes this domain for those who are thinking that understand what i'm talking about sometimes this domain if if the settings are such that you cannot have any external domain then you won't be able to add someone with an external domain okay so it all depends on the setting that you guys have but right now i'm adding users with external or form of multiple type of domains so this is a member so you select that and you can add multiple users at a time rather than going one after the other the next thing is access and privileges so it depends on access level it could be someone that is not actively working on things or do not need to access so many things onto the project you will just give the person basic access but if it's someone that would actively need to be working on some of the items doing some changes doing some okay so you want to give that person a stakeholder access and you can also there's another level of access which is the third level of access if someone that let's say a developer or maybe a qa guy on the team or someone who is uh, actively working and maybe security or okay who can do some technical changes on the project you want to give that person um uh uh uh, uh visual studio okay visual studio subscriber access so that he can use the visual studio to do modification and changes on some of the codes that you guys are building and uploading on the platform so i'm going to go ahead let's put uh stakeholder at this time because i really want us to be basic okay we really need to be basic this is not a technical video this is basic like for someone who is an absolute beginner in azure devops and next thing is when it, it's going to prompt you to add uh, someone to the project sometimes you have multiple projects so you can you can add that user to this uh project to the project that you want to select depends on about project and once you do that you just click on add and that is it so you have the user added this is it the user is bit more 40 this is a user right here this is a user right here okay that is how you add users to the organization and projects okay next we will go ahead and show you how to do uh, settings okay we were, we were rolling down a little bit so uh, the next one is um, the billings this uh, this billing it's only visible to the organizational owner so if you are uh, the project i mean you can have access to this billing you can see by this time we have this is a free tier account so you have usually you have 100 uh, i mean 1080 uh, uh 1800 minutes okay so it's 1800 minutes free so after this you'll be charged to pay okay you'll be charged and how to, like you'll see the bills from right here 
okay so you can have uh, you can see the bills you can always see the bills from right here okay let's go to oh yeah sorry guys there's one thing i just missed right here uh what i was going to say is this is a complete uh free tier account it's a complete free tier account at this time because we're using like complete free, free tier account so when you start doing hosting of your CI/CD pipelines okay continuous integration and development continuous testing when you start building CI/CD pipelines once you initiate CI/CD pipelines you are going to have you do have 1800 minutes free at this time that's what I mean okay and then um, for self uh, that is and this is for uh, a self hosted uh, CI CD okay that's for one for one uh, self hosted so as you increase it it's going to the number of persons is going to determine how you are being built at this time okay so just check it out guys the billing is simple you can always check it out you have the free the resources you have the space to jig of space at this time okay right now so that is it pretty much so it's an amazing tool um, i guess the billing is it can it can always be good so let's look at um, global notification the next one is global notification so this is um some of the changes okay as you guys are doing your builds as team members create pull requests on their codes or maybe do uh, some commits or do their changes okay you can use this and set up notifications so that when is code is completely built when build is complete you can receive notification on your emails your emails for those who are working within uh, uh, the microsoft or they're working with the .NET team or working on c sharp uh, projects you can you you will tell from you will sometimes receive emails when the bills are complete right yep that's it a little bit then uh you can have usage so you have this one simply generates kpis okay kpis are matrices to show um how uh, team members are accessing the team members are accessing resources all right so it creates visualization on how team members are accessing resources who is accessing what at what time and okay so that is it pretty much so that's what is telling us here okay and so this is to help so that uh, if someone is is accessing some of the things that isn't he is not supposed to access they will tell okay they'll tell and they should restrict the access or the permissions for that person to be accessing those specific resources if you are not supposed to access those resources this is for the security teams in that are working on uh, uh on the on the project okay all right guys so let's go ahead we will move on to the next one then this is just extensions some of the extension remember we talked about extensions yesterday okay so the extensions that you will need sometimes is calendar you're going to need calendar you need retrospective you will need uh, estimation extensions you will need uh, other extensions include uh, blockers tracker blockers tracker these are five interesting uh, extensions that you can add I talked about calendar I talked about uh, estimation I talked about retrospective I talked about um, um, blockers tracker and also estimation so i showed you how to add this one yesterday we will go ahead we are going to add another extension right here and that extension is estimation so so yesterday we did add a one right so let's go ahead and add the next one so that you can see what we're talking about so you browse the marketplace so you go right from the top right and right here you add browse you click from right here you see a little like a like a it's like a shopping bag right here right marketplace and you browse it once you browse the marketplace you're going to see a lot of extensions these are a lot of interesting extensions these are sonar cube for those who know what i'm talking about for static code analysis and all of that 
a lot of extensions you have jira extensions and you can even see some of the uh, ai ai logos right i don't know uh, some of the prompts that uh, people have been building and uploading in this marketplace for your use utilization so we will add just uh, the next extension i'm talking about um, the planning poker for est estimation okay so you need to know what i'm talking about the planning poker the planning poker is simply one of the tools or the extensions that is helping us to do our estimation this is a planning poker right here it's an amazing tool for your estimation you can also use this one i've used this one i've used the planning poker with this one you need to sometimes sometimes tap the work items and before you go on to estimation it's been downloaded uh, 37k times and this one has been downloaded just 16 uh i mean 1.6k and i love this one because it has good reviews right you see five star so i'm going to go ahead and download the planning poker i love this one because you can literally be estimating right after right as you groom okay so let's go ahead and install this one if you don't have access you can't you can't install this so let's go back to our organizational setting and you should be able to see that under extensions at this time let's see extensions and this is it right here okay so you can see now the planning poker is right there if you open work items you will see it attached to the work item so that you can do your estimation each free next is azure active advisor azure active directory sorry so so this is the azure active directory and so it says uh, uh you are not a, a member of any azure active directory at this time so this is more of uh, the technical uh more of technical so so sometimes you need to request the active directories to be added okay so that you can use the active directories in your organization so this is more of technical it depends on what the team members are building sometimes okay so they'll be using those azure active directory but i can't say much of it at this time because this is purely a uh, non-technical yeah there are a few things i'm saying that are a little bit technical but please um, don't worry about it first of all understand the basics what is non-technical first then we will come later with things that are technical for us to understand where we are so now, the next one is security right the security is you simply have policies and permissions i talked about access and permissions right so you can go ahead and configure the policies do your policies who can clone uh, repositories who can have access to do editing or do any modification on the work that you're doing and you can come under permissions and also do configurations for permissions who can access what okay so you can do configuration according to whatever you want who should access but uh we will not go deeper into all of that at this time because this is purely for beginners setting up those security configurations is a little bit technical i don't want to go into that at this time project managers they will not need to do the they will not need much to do that sometime before you go into your organization all those security configurations they've been set up already but if you have to go through that it's easy go through it look at the uh, different security levels and you look at it because it's right here you're going to have groups right you're going to have groups you can create a new group from right here okay you can create a new group from right here and then you give security you, you give access and permissions to those group members as necessary give just the least amount of permission that is needed by a user that's called the least privilege permission and you go to now users you can set up permissions at user levels okay like if i come right here i can open i can i can uh, go to this specific user and i can open and check what that user i can give access to what that specific user can access and what that specific user cannot access okay so you see this okay alert and trace is setting create new projects can this user create a new project all of that so i can always tell if i want the person to be able to create a new pro project and can say allow or deny okay so it's easy just go through that and that will be fine right this is an interesting one process 
this is what project manager IT project coordinators you need to know all of these scrum masters and project manager I mean uh, team leads you need to know this one this one uh, under the process you need to understand okay so you see this one right here we are currently under uh, basics okay it's under basics at this time but since under basics so that's why you see just issues you see under the basic you see just uh, issues issues and uh, epics and tasks so you don't see user story so you need to configure that to be using the agile process remember we are doing agile we are working on the agile process so you select this one this is the process that we want to use okay so once you click on the agile process and this is what we are going to be using for this project okay so under this agile process you can see uh, uh, you can see bugs you can create epic features and you won't have issues you can you can have issues sometimes right but you got you're going to see um uh more of user story okay at the backlog level so let's look at what you're going to have at the backlog level so you're going to have the epic the features you can see the story that's the user story right and you can see the task okay so that's what you're going, to, you're going to see so and this is uh let's see okay that's fine so let's go back so if you want to see all the processes these are the processes at this time we're using the agile process okay and that is it so let's go ahead let's go ahead to the next ones this one is just full agent this one is just you want to do some settings and these are general settings okay general settings for the project and i talked about the development pools development pools okay so it just depends on what um configuration okay the different deployment sorry the deployment pools so you can create initiate deployments okay deployments and uat okay user uh acceptance testing it depends on what you want to do you can do deployment from the dev environment to uh, the staging environment or you're doing deployment from the dev environment to a uat environment or maybe to a production environment it depends on what you want to set up it's all fine and let's go ahead parallel jobs parallel jobs is simply uh how you set up the different builds because you could have multiple developers the building the work together i talked about this yesterday and if you have maybe a team member number one or team member number two they're working on different uh, components and they can set up these pro these jobs to be running concurrently okay and so you can set it up and you can set up it depends okay you can set up automated pipelines okay that can you can set up a pool scm in this case you start hearing about pool scm the technical guys who understand what i'm talking about the developers who know what i'm talking about you can set up pool scms or you can set up a pool periodically or pull this one right after this one is done or you can set up concurrent jobs this is all what it's all about and the next thing we will talk about authentication configurations okay this one is simply helping for those who want to access some specific repositories or some specific jobs some specific pipelines jobs so you need to set up authentication for those who want to access those repositories set up security and access that's what this one is all about okay and right next is going to be um what is it again this one is just a repository we talked about repository already and this one is talking about artifacts and storage okay under storage you have your different artifacts because remember guys when you build your work you have different versions of your project and those different versions are artifacts are the different artifacts so you want to store backup of your different versions of the work that you're building to make sure that you don't lose any of your work items those who are technical they understand what i'm talking about guys if you have any question put in the comment section below and we can always uh, answer those some of those questions okay and also if someone posts a question and maybe someone uh, some of our viewers technical viewers please you can always help answer some of the questions that 
uh, viewers are asking and you can help understand the understanding and make it easy we are demystifying the tech space making it easy for everyone to understand if you hear anything here that is technical and you don't understand don't worry let's understand the basics and all the technical things that are coming over we have developers and we have machine learning guys we have artificial intelligence guys that can jump on this and we will get more insight and also devops engineering guys that can jump on this and we can have more insight on all of that so this is it we've explained every piece of the different things that you will see under the organizational setting and those are the, all the different pieces the first video had an explanation of different all the different components of the, under the project level yesterday and today we have been able to explain to you all the different components that we have under the project under the organizational level i guess at this time we do understand if you have any question guys please don't hesitate to post your question and we didn't want to make this video to be too long i guess this is about if, if i'm not making an error it should be like 30 minutes right now let's see we are at 36 minutes so we well, the video yesterday was 35 minutes and we really want to stop this one right at this time <laughs> sorry it was longer than we planned we wanted to make it like 30 minutes max but we'll stop this one at this time and the next video i want to run us let me take the few seconds to explain what we'll be doing next next we are going to come over uh, right on the on the backlog on this project okay we'll come to this backlog and we are going to create work items on this backlog okay we'll create work items and we'll show you exactly what those how those i work items are being created how those work items are being uh, okay how they are being uh, discussions have been made on the work items what you need to do if you want to tag a team member you want to uh, let a team member contribute or maybe collaborate with you on a specific work item we'll show you all of that we'll show you how to add acceptance criteria set up security set up at uh, other states at multiple states on a specific work item and also set up an estimation for a specific work item remember we just added our poker planner right here this is our poker planner it's right here and it's interesting that it's right there we can we can do planning okay we can show you how a particular uh, item can be estimated using the poker planner for those who understand what a poker, poker planner is this is it right here you can see on this work item right here at this time so it's easy you can do the estimation user stories uh, i mean with the story points as we move forward from within the items so these are the interesting things that will be coming up in the next video if you love this video give it a thumbs up and also share this video right do not let any of your friends miss this interesting materials this is hands-on it's going to be practical it's hands-on and feel free ask your question and also make sure you comment in the comment section and let us know how we're doing give us uh, post any question on any how you want there next video or subsequent videos should look like let us know how we're doing thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video bye